CCTV is everywhere. With the average person being caught over 300 times a day, you really cannot escape these security cameras. Constant surveillance is necessary in the modern age. With security fears running rampant, we put a lot of faith in these little security equipment. But how exactly do they work? My name's Jake Evans with the Region Security Garden channel here on YouTube. I want to send a special shout out to everyone in our subscriber community. Thank you for taking a part of your day to be here with us. If you're not part of that community yet, you can just click that little red subscribe button. It's free and you'll never miss a video. First off, I'd like to mention we made a guide on how to most effectively use CCTV. You can either access that in the link in the description down below or the card in the upper right of the screen. Now, CCTV systems work on an isolated network. But what exactly does that mean? Networks are, in essence, a system of connected entities. Two common types of networks that you use every day are LAN and WAN networks. LAN stands for Local Area Network and basically defines a network that is specifically at a location. An example of this might be a school connecting all the laptops, computers and printers and other devices together would be on a local area network specific to that school so no one else can gain access to it. WAN on the other hand stands for Wide Area Network. This is a network that can cover the globe and connects many systems and devices together. The most commonly used WAN is one you're using right now, the internet. The internet is a WAN due to it connecting everything in the world to each other. It isn't a localized hotspot of connected devices but is instead a massive complex system of moving parts all to connect everyone to each other. You may have noticed at home that when you're using your computer it gives you the option to connect to a local LAN. This basically allows all the computers, devices, any other systems like that to be connected on one network that is outside of the internet. Sure, you can send files and documents through the internet through the use of the WAN, but in this case if you wanted it to be a bit more secluded then you could use the LAN of your house and you wouldn't have to use the internet to send files or any kind of data between two devices. Now when it comes to isolated networks, these these are networks which cannot be picked up by any old type of receiver. You could have a house with a LAN and a WAN network. If you were to put CCTV in this house, it would be an entirely separate network, not able to access by either the LAN or the WAN. It does depend on the type of camera you choose, there are wired and wireless options available. If you did choose the wired option, in order for there to be an isolated network, you'd just simply not connect all of the cameras to your WAN or your LAN network. You wouldn't have to worry about signals being emitted or picked up by any kind of receivers because everything is hardwired in, you know exactly exactly where all the cables physically are connected to in your house. If you chose the wireless option, typically the way you do it is you would isolate a network on your router or your router and use that to connect everything to each other. So whilst you are using a router which does connect everything through a LAN, you've effectively cut off this particular network with the rest of the network of your house. These can be quite complicated to set up, so I have linked in the description a tutorial to set up one of these networks for basic IP cameras. Typically the signal from your cameras would have to go through either a DVR or an NVR. A DVR stands for a digital video recorder, whereas an NVR stands for a network video recorder. DVR recorders are used if you are using a wired solution. They are typically older, they use only analog cameras which can't process their own footage and have to be processed by the DVR before you can actually watch the footage back. Obviously this does limit their effectiveness a little bit because you would have to physically wire everything in your house up, but if you didn't want to use or don't have a wireless network available to you, these are the options you're going to go for. They also do tend to be a little bit cheaper as they're a pretty old option at this point. An NVR recorder on the other hand can be used either wired or wirelessly and it works with IP cameras which are able to pick up video and audio and process their own footage, meaning that you can hear anything that you see. These are a more modern setup for CCTV cameras and are typically more common, however they do come at a pricier point than the DVRs. It's up to you whether you want to stay wired or go wireless with your CCTV choice and depending on the system you're working with. All in all though, that's a pretty simple summary on how exactly CCTV works. Obviously on a case-by-case -case basis, certain factors do change, but for the most part, the key is isolating the network that you're gonna be using the CCTV camera on, be it wireless or wired. With that being said, if you did enjoy this video, make sure to leave a like and a comment. If you really enjoyed it, make sure to subscribe, and we will see you guys next week with the next video.